again, NewTutor.com, coming in, making a video for you again today. Um, so a number of years ago, I did a book review on uh, an author by the name of Vicki Beeching. She was a Christian so-and-so, somebody, somebody, and she did a book of coming out and all of this nonsense. And um, I bought the book simply because I wanted to see what her argument was in the book. You know, why, how can you how can you reconcile this idea of that lifestyle when you are a Christian? You claim to be a believer in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You can claim to be a follower of the Messiah, Jesus. So, you know, we call him Yeshua, okay? We get it. How can you, how can you reconcile that position? How do you, wh where does this come from? And I quoted in that video the page on, in her book where she claims, hey, listen, this is okay because the law of Moses no longer matters. The law of Moses has been done away with. And I also did a video a number of years back on, um, there was a woman who was the daughter of a Christian apologist at CARM, uh, the name of CARM, I believe was, I forgot what the acronym was for, CARM. It was some kind of apologetics ministry. And um, Rachel Slick was her name. And she basically gave up Christianity and um, uh, get, left it all behind because she eventually came to the conclusion, you know, because her father is an apologist, you know, apologetics, you know, he's very, you know, logic, logic oriented and trying to prove the gospel that way. But she, she also was raised that way. But then she asked the question, how can the God of this side of the book be this and the God of this side of the book be that? It doesn't make sense. It's all made up. I don't care about this anymore. I'm just going to go out there and enjoy life and, you know, and live like the rest of the world. And that's what she did. And she's right. They're all right. Absolutely 100% correct. They're absolutely, they hold a logical position. This is why Christianity will fail. Christianity, when pushed to its logical conclusion, will fail. And this is why I don't call myself a Christian anymore. And I know there's some people out there who do that. That's fine. And people even in our movement who do that. I don't care. But I say it's wrong because when you push Christianity to its logical conclusion, when you hold the position that in the beginning of the book, God is this, and at the back of the book, God is that, you have an illogical position that can't hold up under scrutiny. So this week, I saw this article. This is from churchleaders.com. LGBTQ artist now has the top Christian album on iTunes, published February 11th, 2021. This was about a week ago. It says, openly queer artist Semler, the stage name of Grace Baldrich, claimed the number one spot on iTunes Christian album chart for two days and counting this week. Baldridge's newly released Preacher's Kid knocked down Laura Dangles, Dangles, Lauren Dangles, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce her name, Look Up Child from the top of the chart where it had held steady for the much of the past two years. A Christian music exec told me to my face that there was no space for a story like mine in the industry, and I want to prove him wrong, said Baldridge, shortly before her album moved to the number one spot on the Christian chart. The artist said she wanted to claim the top spot for anyone who has who has ever been cast out in the name of God. Um, and it goes on and on and on and on and talks about this and that and just, you know, her her struggle and all this stuff and nonsense. And then um, uh, you go back to the comment section, the comments, I mean, there's full of people sticking up for this woman and how great this is that we finally, Christianity finally has come around. Um, and again, I make the position that she's right because she holds the logical high ground. If Christianity is going to teach that the law is done away with, it was nailed to the cross, and there's nothing, there's nothing matters anymore, well, then nothing matters anymore. But see, that's not the see that when you read your Bible from beginning to end, that's not what you see there. All the way at the very beginning, at the very end of your book in Revelation, it talks about those who have the testimony of our Messiah and who keep the commandments of God. Just like the beginning of the book. We know he was from the beginning. The creator was at the beginning. And Yeshua says, me and my father are one. It's the same consistent message from beginning to end. And he says, there is no salvation but me. Someone asked me this week, they said, so Zach, how can you reconcile God when he says there's no salvation but me? In Isaiah and other places. I'm like, well, what was our Messiah's name? Salvation. Yeshua. Total coincidence, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> from beginning to end, it's one consistent story. But see, Christianity makes a change here 
And see, now we don't have this thing anymore, the, the, those words of Moses. That's the, that's the ceremony. That's the moral law and ceremony. We don't need that stuff anymore. We don't, we, the, the, we don't have that anymore. The, the, all that Leviticus stuff, gone, done away with. See, we have a distinction now. We have the law of our Messiah, which is, you, show me where that is. Where is that listed at? Now, see, he's the same yesterday and today and forever. Our Messiah said, my doctrine is not mine but his who sent me. And we read in Proverbs, Proverbs 4, 2, For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my Torah. Forsake ye not my law. So intellectually, logically, they hold the high ground on this. As long as you're in Christianity, you're going to be beat every time at the game of chess that they're playing. Because you can't say that this stuff doesn't matter anymore, but then try to hold them to some standard that you say doesn't matter anymore. It does matter. And this is why you see such a huge falling away in the church today. You have this fancy liberal Christianity that's just growing by leaps and bounds in our country today where nothing is wrong, God is love, and everyone is welcome into the kingdom. And there's no behavior, there's no belief, there's no immorality that's going to keep you out of it because God loves all. God does love all. He loves all. All. He loves all. But see, he's also just. And there's certain things he cannot abide by. He cannot. What is sin? Sin is transgression of the law. That's what it says. First John. Sin is transgression of the law. Paul said, I had not known sin, but by the law. Because the law teaches you what sin is so you can repent and turn from it. Anyway, I saw this article this week. It about drove me nuts. Um, but it's just reality. The, rea the reality is that Christianity, as we know it today, is roadkill. It's absolute roadkill. And it's going to continue to be roadkill until people in Christianity, people who follow the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, people who are true believers and the true creator of heaven and earth, say, no what? You know, no more. I'm done with this. We need to go back to what the Father commanded. We need to understand what he says is right and wrong and follow that to its logical conclusion instead of this whole nonsense that nothing matters anymore. It's nailed to the cross and following that to its logical conclusion because one leads to righteousness. The other one leads to lawlessness. All right, we'll leave it at that. Go home, read your Bible. Thanks.